Hey guys, welcome to Learning Accounting. I'm Jim of the Kabir, the founder of Learning Accounting, and this particular channel is expected to treat all related accounting issues, especially for professional accountants. So we'll be looking at courses like financial reporting, corporate reporting, or strategic business reporting for all type of exams, be it the ACCA exams or the ICANN exams or other related um, tertiary education exams like the masters, the postgraduate or the undergraduate issues, you know, all those exams will be looking into them. Now I would like you to watch the video and you know drop any questions in the comment section and I'll be here to answer your question for you. So stay tuned and you know watch the video to the end. Hello welcome to Learning Accounting. Today we'll be looking at group question and this question usually would be for a financial reporting exam and it will cover most of the major areas that we'll probably have concerns with. So I think if you pay attention to this video, you might just learn a two, um, you might just learn something new, which might be of help for you, probably in the master's exams or professional exams as the case may be. Okay, so um, let's get started with the question. So I've got a question here, and this is a group account question called Power Group and um, it has a whole lot of information in it. We have an um, uh, income statement here, as you can see, with other comprehensive income. We also have a statement of financial position in this question as well, with some additional information. Um, I won't say there are a whole lot of information, but at least it covers all the areas we're expected to know. And I decided to allocate the 40 mark to this type of question because um, the question asks us to prepare the consolidated statement of profit or loss, which is the comprehensive income, and the consolidated statement of financial position. So we have a whole lot of information ahead of us, and we are going to take it one after the other. And I'm very sure you'll be learning something new today. Okay, make sure you subscribe to my video on YouTube. And you can also follow me on Instagram and you'll be getting more videos like this that will help you to improve your um, accounting skill. Okay, so let's start with the question and what are we expected to do? Now, the first thing I would normally recommend students to do is to um, always get the information to determine the period the acquisition takes place. And from here, we could see that acquisition from this information here, it said on 1st of January 2018, Powell acquired 80% of the equity interest of Sal Limited. So that was the subsidiary in this question. But if we read the first paragraph, which I skipped, it said Powell PLC uses the acquisition, the acquisition method for consolidation of financial position statements and equity accounting for associates. So they are informing us that we have a subsidiary and probably an associate. Power uses the fair value method for calculating goodwill. So it's already informing us that there isn't a fair value. Of course, this implies that the non-controlling interest will also be valued in the same manner. So that's just some information that would help us later in the question. Um, other than that, since we have this information, this is 1st of January 2018, and the year end in the question is 31st December 2018. That means acquisition takes place at the beginning of the year, which implies in this case for profit or loss, we are going to be consolidating everything side by side, as we won't have to prove it south. Although in other questions I might likely solve in the future, you will see where I would have to prove it south because it probably acquires south during the accounting period. So that's a very important information. Now, once we've gotten that information, it will be the next thing that be recommended for us, um, which I will always recommend my students to do, is to <coughs> drop a format. So we have our consolidated, okay. Let me use a purple biro or a purple marker. So we have the consolidated, statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income
and other comprehensive income for the year ended. Thirty first December twenty eighteen, according to this question. Uh, our figure is in pound, so I'll just drop the zeros here. The first thing we have here is revenue. Like I said, we are going to be adding them line by line because the acquisition in this case um, took place at the beginning of the current accounting year. So I'll just be bringing up all this figure. So we have 173813. So here 173813 plus plus the subsidiaries information. And the subsidiaries information we have 83532. 83532. Leave that. We'll give a little bit of space just in case I'll be adding or deducting from revenue of cost of sales. Similarly, I'll do the same thing for cost of sales. And we have here 127. For one two seven four zero six again plus that of the subsidiary sixty six eight two five sixty six eight two five okay I'm going to also leave a couple of space because I might do some adjustments on that cost of sales and that will give me my gross profits now of course the submission will give me that. Normally, the next thing that should come will be distribution cost and distribution cost. What do we have? We have 5570 and 3342. So we have 5570 and 3342. So then we have the admin expense. So I'm just going to abbreviate admin expense and what do we have on the admin expense? 9738 9738 plus 5010 plus 5010. Of course, if I was using an Excel, it would have been faster, especially for the ACC exams. But um, I just choose to use the writing board for today. Okay, after that, what do we have next? We have order income. So, uh, order income. But I'm going to leave it empty. There's no information there. I'm going to leave a line for other information that might likely come or two. Then I have my profit before interest and tax. Okay, we'll be working for that. After profit before interest and tax, then we have the finance costs. So the finance cost, what do we have? For the finance cost, we have 372. 372. After that, um, of course, zero. That is the next information. So I don't really have to bring that zero there. Okay, then we have profit before tax. And our profit before tax, of course, uh, we'll be doing some workings to get that information. Then we have our tax expense. And the tax expense for the parent, in this case, we have 8607. 8607. Plus that of the subsidiary, we have two, two, seven, two, seven hundred. Okay, and this gives me my profit for the year. Okay, after the profit for the year, we have our other comprehensive income. Now for the other comprehensive income, of course, 
so many things would come there but in this question we just have gain on revaluation of land gain on revaluation of land and we just have that of the parent alone which is 5063 5063 okay then we have the total comprehensive income now after the total comprehensive income so we could have this we definitely be having shelf um like for the shelf of it we have profits for the year for the year attributed first the parents and the non-controlling interests we just have to do this now to get the profit for the year and we also have total comprehensive income attributed to parents and non-controlling interests and we have our total comprehensive income So that's just an aspect of what the requirement has access to do and i've just created an empty format bringing in some of this information i've not considered the main requirement of the question neither the first paragraph and i'm going to do the same thing now for the consolidated statement of financial position now i needed to do them both immediately so that by the time I start solving the question, I'll just be inserting the figures. Consolidated statement of financial position as at 31st December 2018 again. And definitely our set will come first. I'm going to abbreviate this one because of I don't take much of my time. Non-current assets. So let's pick up the figures there. So we have property, plant, and equipment. I'm going to also abbreviate my PPE. Okay, so I don't have to start writing story there. Property, plant, and equipment. Then we have investment in 10% loan. Now investment. In ten percent loan from Saul Limited. Now, for this investment in ten percent loan, I think I should make it clear. You can see the figure under the parents section here, and under the non current liability section, you can see the figure under the subsidiary. So, this is an intra group transaction, and we are going to be eliminating it. Investment subsidiary, of course, we give rise to goodwill. We give rise to goodwill, so that we are working for goodwill. Although, um, investment subsidiary here, yeah, we need to know what 27900 stands for. As we go through the question, we'll be able to identify that. Investment in associates, also. Investment in associates. So we have here. Yeah, Investment in associates because um, we need to also know what that figure entails. Other investments, okay. So, one of the things we should always expect in an exam condition is that the examiner could choose. To merge all this investment together and give you information 
is not left for you to be able to properly separate the information. So let me bring in some of these figures. We have 45,038,703. So we have 45,000 plus 38,703. Those other figures will definitely come by later. Then we have 2,786. Here, 2,786. Uh, no investment subsidiary will come because that will go to calculation of goodwill. Associates, we won't bring it because we'll be doing working for that. So let me just make emphasis that we're going to do some working there. Then we have other investment to be 7061. 7061. Okay, so other investments. Okay, so we are done with the non-current asset section. So we have the current asset section. Now for the current asset section, what do we have? Inventory, receivables, and bank. So let me just bring out the figures for the information first. Inventories, trade receivable, and bank. And the figures there we have 11973 11973 plus 3342 3342 okay the next one receivables we have 13059 13059 plus plus we have 6962 6962 and we have bank to be 837 837 okay so we'll leave that to get our total assets okay then we have the equity and liability section and we have equity now for the equity, we have the share capital. Let me abbreviate the information. Let me just write it in full. Share capital. Now the share capital for the purpose of consolidation, only the parent share capital comes in, and that's 27842. 27842. After that, um, what we have next is the revaluation surplus. So, revaluation surplus. After revaluation surplus, then we have retained earnings. Retained earnings. So, we're going to do some work in here. Definitely going to do some work in here because just have to mention that. And um, we have a non controlling interest. Definitely some working will be done on the non controlling interest. After the non controlling interest, we have the non current liabilities. I'm just going to abbreviate that. And the non current liabilities, we have. 10% loan note there, 10% loan notes. Uh, what do we have? We have 6960, 6960 plus we have 2786, 2786. Okay, then we have the current liability section. And for the current liability section, we have 9429468, and that's our trade payables. 9468, 9468, and 10,025. 10,025. Okay, after that, we have bank overdraft. 
bank OD. And for the bank overdraft, we have 4734. 4734. Okay, and the last information there we have is a current tax payable. So we have current tax payable. And the figure there is 7797. 7797 plus 2228. 2228. Okay, so we'll be having our total equity and liability just there. Because I'm going to bring in a calculator now. So let me quickly get my calculator ready. Just in case I'll be needing my calculator, so I don't need it now, though. Just have to bring in my calculator. Okay, so what do we have? Let me see if I can get my calculator here. Okay, wonderful. I have my calculator because these are the things I need for the purpose of solving this question. So you can see from the onset, what we've just done is to basically draft out the whole format from the beginning, you know, down to the end, each and every line by line information. While we read through the question now, we'll be able to now bring in a lot of information that we've not taken into consideration. And that will also give me guidance of what comes next. So let's go to the question now properly taking it from the beginning again. Now here the question says Powell uses um, the acquisition method. We've talked about that already. So let's just move to the second paragraph. So they say on 1st of January 2018, Powell PLC acquired 80% of the equity interest voting shares of SAL. On 1st of January 2018, the directors of Powell agreed to pay for the acquisition of SAL Limited in the following ways. So the first we have is a share exchange consisted of two shares in PAL for every three shares in acquired in what? SAL. So this is a share for share exchange. So I think the first thing I need to do here before going too far is I'll call this my first note, note one which I'll call the group structure. Now the group structure, PAL is acquiring SAL. And PAL has acquired 80% of SAL, therefore the non-controlling interest in SAL is 20%. I think that shouldn't be too difficult. Then we have, I'll call this my workings on purchase consideration. Since the first information is on the purchase consideration for SAL, purchase consideration for SAL, I have to use that because we have an associate. So the first is working one, which is the share for share exchange consideration. Now for the share for share exchange consideration, we are going to be debiting the investment with the shares acquired. So let me change the color of my marker here. Now the shares acquired, remember we are acquiring 80% of SAL. So let's go to the financial position. We have 25065. 25065. Okay multiply by the basis of acquisition which is 2 over 3 multiply by the parent share price now we have to again come back to the question back to the beginning now here we have the parent share price power group you can see 5 pound there so we are going to use 5 pound okay so here my calculator will come to the use and um, was 0 0.8. I think I should bring it to the side of the screen. 0 0.8 multiplied by 25065. 
because that gives me this figure multiply by 2 divided by 3 that give me this figure then multiply by multiply by 5 and I get 66 840 66 840 that's what I get okay now coming back again I'm going to debit further I'm going to credit my share capital and the share premium and basically we are doing the same thing again so I'm going to open my brackets 80% of 25065 multiply by 2 over 3 and multiply by 1 because the 1 is the power value there let's identify that quickly so you can see here we have share capital of one you know um, one pound each so that's why I'm using one here so again uh, we'll do the same calculation of course that will give me 13 three six eight if I want to calculate it 13 three six eight so that I don't have to go through the process all over again I'm going to do the same thing here again 80 percent multiply by two five zero six five multiply by two over three multiply by the premium which is four because anything above the power value is a premium so 